Welcome back to Dow of Twang. I'm Dave. Got a little upbeat piece today. It's a, it's an A major um, one four five type uh, riff. It's kind of a bouncy feel to it. And uh, in a minute, I'm going to try to I'm going to stop this and try to zoom this in a little bit so you won't see my mug, but maybe you can see my hands a little bit better. I had a couple of requests about that recently. So. Um, Welcome, if this is your first time. So glad that you're here. And if you've been with us for a while and working through some of this stuff lately, this is going to kind of fit in with some of the stuff we've been doing, but it should be a, a good place to just pick up and get into our program um, in whatever stage you're in. And uh, please leave me some feedback. Subscribe if you want to um, after this video. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. Okay, so let me zoom in here and we'll, we'll get going on this. All right, got you moved in here. So here's the plan today. I'm going to show you um, a couple of pretty straightforward little maneuvers and then how to um, kind of elaborate on those to travel around different parts of the neck um, kind of using the same move, but accessing different notes and things in different positions. Okay, so the way to go about this is we're going to start with the chord progression and then um, figure out what our triad notes are for these three chords. It should be pretty simple. They're all major chords, and we'll be able to kind of, you know, use the same shape for each one in different places. Um, and then... Um, kind of, you know, work on a little bit of phrasing and some ideas, like I said, from, from going to different positions and some bends that can fit in there with it and stuff. Um, very similar to that um, opening demonstration. Now, it's an upbeat one, right? So I'm going to demonstrate a lot of this stuff slower, obviously. And, you know, work at your own speed. Don't just try to put that that backing track on right away if it's you know, too quick paced. Just work this stuff out and then, you know, um, do your own thing, jam with somebody else, make your own loop or something. But I think you'll also find that this is sort of a baseline kind of way of thinking. So you, you can kind of hear the progression even if you're just playing the single note stuff by yourself. And that's a good way to practice. So here's the progression. It's a one, four, five progression in A. And it looks like this. We'll slow it down a little bit from the backing track. Okay, so it's A, D, E, D. Back to A. Um, not going to talk about scales a lot here um, in this session, but triads. Um, now, that's your root, third, and fifth in any chord, okay? In this case, they're all major chords. Um, there's the root, the major, third, and the fifth, all right? Now, if you don't know what those are right away for these chords or just how to kind of, you know, visualize a triad w from a bar chord position or something, um, that's okay. Here's how you can start with that and, and figure that out is take the A and just use the major scale. Okay, and just count up to those degrees. The first, the root, the third, and the fifth. And that time I went up and hit that octave of the root, right? Just because it's just kind of an ear training thing, right? Okay. Now, because we're on these bass strings down here, you can um, just move that whole thing to this root for the D. The E. bunch of other places you can do this. Okay. Um, and on 
higher strings and stuff. But, you know, this is a good place to start. And um, this is a good way to, you know, get going on a lot of your um, improvisations, too. Kind of, kind of borrowing from the bass line, really, and, and riffing on that. So here's another, um, besides, another way to play those same tones or notes is, okay, kind of a, more of a reach there, but if you count it up this way, okay, now here's kind of the main move that we're talking about today, which is start on the root, go to the second degree, and slide it to the third, okay, really practice this, even if you get it right away, or you, you, you know it, you know, mechanically practice it. Okay, because once you start moving around to different chords, you might not be quite as slick as, as, as you thought. You know, a lot of times I'll be like, oh, I got that, you know, and then I'll try to actually get up to speed and do it, and I'm like, well, you know, I... I I can see it in my mind's eye, but my, my hand's not doing it the way I want, right? That's just, you know, uh, where you just need a little bit of practice. And a little bit of practice goes a long way. You do this, you know, ten times in a row, muscle memory's already starting. Right, so I'm not giving as much time value to that slide from the second to the third, right? Really just looking for those three notes, but I'm sliding in. All right. And, you know, we don't have to follow the backing track the whole time. You know, just you, you, once you start doing this, something like that, you're getting say, you know, man, that reminds me of all these different, you know, songs I've heard and ideas that I have in my head. And, you know, go ahead and explore all that, you know, move it around to different places and different keys and things. Um, but sticking with this A for the sake of this lesson, um, you could also do it here. Okay, and that's really useful because you're, you know, in, in an A groove... were the same, basically the same mechanics, right? Um, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So let me put the track on and just kind of stay right in around that home base. And this is a little bit higher tempo, I realize, so practice at your own speed. but I just want you to see where we're going here, right? Now, it's going to take time. Practice it till you are just absolutely comfortable. Now, after a while, one thing you can do to kind of get musical with it right away is don't do it the same way every time. And if it's, you know, too jumpy, like, uh, you notice I, I got kind of tired after a minute of always trying to catch that last... D on the way down. Well, it turns out you can you don't have to, you know, you can kind of let some of the stuff hold and put some rest in your phrasing. Uh, I'll wait for it to come around. And here's what I mean.
Okay, so I kind of started leaving the D out, right? It's almost like a passing, you know, doesn't get as much time value as the A and the E in the progression, right? So that makes sense. You know, don't, don't, don't kill yourself like, ah, I missed that beat on the, I didn't get to the D. You know, do stuff that feels right to you and, the, and, and that feels, you know, good phrasing. Um, and remember, the skills are just that. They're just the skills. They're not, you know, the, 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 the requirement <laughs> of any of this, right? Um, so... In fact, it sounds really cool to kind of hang out on that E and wait for that A to come back around, right? Now, you notice I, um, and I, I, you know, trashed up a couple places there. But what I was doing there, I'm just going to show you, kind of introduce this to you real quickly and then, then get you to your practice, um, is I was doing some octave stuff, you know, that was pretty straightforward, different fingering because it's not these bass strings anymore, it's up here. Okay, so you can kind of work on that, right? Figure out where those are. It's the same notes as... Okay, that's your real workout here, right? Not trying to go fast, but trying to really keep moving around with that. Right, and that A is your one chord. That's your tonal center for this. So even if you're not using the backing track, in fact, I would say, you know, do some practicing without, you know, always using a backing track, right? So you can kind of hear... The, that progression without even having the chords there, right? And just do everything in different places. you'll really start seeing how this simple move will fit together in all of these different places and how a lot of soloing in that kind of major pentatonic and Almond Brothers sort of feel and that southern feel, um, British stuff too, um, British invasion stuff, really exploits that and that Taj Mahal first album it's just a god it's like a encyclopedia literally of of this stuff um that that uh that easy rider and or and and those songs that are on there in that states I mean it's just <laughs> Those southern licks, that's right before the Almond Brothers, by the way. That stuff is, that's like the kind of genesis of a lot of this kind of playing. If you haven't ever checked out that album, that's one worth mentioning. I don't plug a lot of things and, you know, try to lecture people on what they should listen to and so forth on this channel. But that's just a, if there's anything that's, that's, uh, essential blues, rock, southern guitar playing. It's that first Taj Mahal. It's a white house and sitting out front in a chair. <laughs> Look it up. Um, so I think that's good for now. Now, I'm going to do a follow-up on this where we're going to put a little bit of that major scale stuff in there. And it turns out that you can start kind of landing on some other chord tones besides just, you know, that um, uh, going back to that root every time. And here's just a real short example of that. And then I'll get you to the practice loop. Let me know how you do with this one. And I'll talk to you soon.